Jeez. All right. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what we have is we have a rectangle. I thought we were talking about triangles of the theorem, and I gave you a rectangle. But the rectangle is broken up into two different triangles. Now, we know rectangles have four sets of right angles, right? So if we kind of look at this and we just focus on this triangle, forget about the rest of this, we see that we actually have a right triangle. Now, by looking at Pythagorean theorem, we know that the sum of the sides or the square of the sum of the sides equals the hypotenuse squared. So now what we need to do is, again, remember, I'm sorry, we need to determine what is our A, B, and our C. So I think the easiest thing I always do is to find the hypotenuse first. Because if you can find the hypotenuse, you know the sides are your other two sides of the triangle. So what I like to do is I just take my right angle, and I draw my little arrow pointing across from it. And then I say, hey, that's going to be my hypotenuse. So you can see the hypotenuse is 8. right? So remember, the sum of the square of your sides equals your hypotenuse squared. So I'll write 8 squared. Then I have the square of my two sides. So I need to determine one of my two sides. Well, I know one side is 3. So I'm going to do 3 squared. And the other one, crap, that's x. I don't know what that is. Hmm. But that's OK, because now I'll just have an equation. So I'll have uh, 3 squared plus x squared. How do I know what? No, ask questions if you, if you don't see what I did, please. Huh? Oh, no, no, I haven't done it yet. So now we apply order of operations. All right, we first simplify our equation, then we use inverse operations. So 3 squared is 9 plus x squared equals 64. Huh? Well, remember now, let's look at our variable. My variable is x squared, right? So what is happening to my variable? It's being squared by itself, and it's also what else is happening? What is that 9 doing to it? It's adding to it, right? Right, because you can rewrite this as x squared plus 9 equals 64. So therefore, we, when we're applying inverse operations, we always undo addition and subtraction first. So before you square root, you have to undo addition and subtraction first. So I subtract the 9 x squared equals, um, that's going to be 55. Very close to my last answer, right? Now we take the square root. And you could say x equals the square root of 55. And I believe that's going to be the simplified answer. OK? That's it. Done. OK.